Hello, and welcome back to the Fish Locker Workshop. Today I'm going to be making some conga traces. The two rigs that I generally use suit two different situations. One of them, if you're fishing really, really hard into the wreck or on some really rough ground, I like to use this rig. Now it's it's an adaptation of like a helicopter rig or a portman rig. You have a piece, I don't know what's that, 10 to 12 inches long, 100 pound mono, starting in a strong ball bearing swivel, ending in another strong barrel swivel, but with just a weak everyday like shore fishing snap link to your lead. And then between these two beads sliding on here, we have a trace of a foot and a half to two feet, not very long at all, 200 pound mono ending in a 2-0, sorry, a 10-0 Cox and Royal meat hook. Now these hooks are fantastic. You could pretty much anchor a boat with them and they hold their point excellently. The reason why I use such a short hook length is because when you're really, really hard in the wreck, you want to feel as soon as that fish picks up your line, your bait. Whereas if you're using, say for instance, the other type of rig that I like, which is just a general sliding ledger rig like this, often what can happen is an eel can pick up your bait and just sit there. And until it starts drawing line through your lead, you don't feel a bite on the rod tip. Whereas with this, because, because you're sitting pretty much solid like that, any little tug, you feel it straight away. I found it, I lose less gear with this in the hard ground and in the wrecks than the sliding ledger rig. This is a fantastic rig for fishing for conger eels, don't get me wrong. Simplicity is perfect. When you're fishing, when you say when you're when you're anchored up tide of a wreck and you're fishing onto clean ground or not really really rough stuff but just outside of the wreck and you're drawing the eels out of the wreck this is perfect this is this will be my rig of choice every time but when i'm really fishing amongst the hard stuff it's this one now the reason why i have a weaker snap link in there is because I've found if I use mono as, a, as like a rotten bottom as a weak link often when you've got a fish on and it's thrashing around this just breaks off when it's mono because this is a hundred pound mono because my lead is 80 pound mono because my braid's 60 pound I've found that if this gets stuck in the bottom this is weak enough that I will be able to break it out so it's like a strong weak link if that makes sense also, you will notice that I have a little bit of rubber tubing here and here. Now, on here, that is simply to cover up the tag end. I like to leave a little bit of a tag end just in case the knot decides to slip a little bit. But if I left it out like that, what would happen is whenever the line came caught, it would just get caught around in your tag end like that and you would cause tangles. So, a little bit of rubber tubing slides on there keeps that nice and tidy the rubber tubing that I have around the hook here this it not only keeps the tag end tidy as with the top but when you have a little bit of loomy tubing here not only does this glow in the dark so it's added attraction but it's added abrasion resistance as well. Now, ling and conger eels, as you can see here, they do tear it up a little bit, but I would rather they tore up the rubber than tore up the trace. I'll show you how to make each of these rigs individually. I'm just gonna run through the reasons why and the benefits of before that. With the sliding ledger rig, all I have, Generally, I'll, on my leader, I'll run two beads and a little zip slider. Now, there's dozens of different types of these zip sliders around. You can get 
get big ones and get smaller ones. I've found that these Cox and Roll ones are great. Some of the smaller ones that you see, bear in mind that these are just from China on eBay. You get a pack for about a pound. They're fine for when you're fishing for smaller stuff. But these little ones, like this little snap here, you try and put a 10 ounce lead on that and it just opens it up straight away. And also, the holes in them, I'm not sure if you can see, aren't really big enough to hold a heavy mono. If you can see the edges of these beads, these sliders here, it fits a beading perfectly. Like that. So as you can see here, when I have a bead on either side, it fits up against it nicely. They won't foul round themselves like some of the larger sliders do. I've covered this in, in my uh, ledger rig, sliding ledger rig video. At the end of my leader, I have a strong coast lock swivel. Now, these are just a generic. Something like this, 180 pound braking strain, more than enough. Use them for sharks as well. Now, the reason why I use a coast lock is because times before in the past, when I've used just a standard barrel swivel, where, sorry, snap rule like this, when you have a very large fish that's in a lengthy fight, what happens is this bends like that and the fish ends up coming off and you're wounded. I defy anybody to try and bend one of these out. Tow a boat with them, they're fantastic. And with the ball bearing on the inside like that, sometimes when you have a swivel like this, when it's under tension, it doesn't spin properly. So you end up getting your line wound up. Now, whereas before, with the hard ground and the wrecking rig, I had a shorter hook length. This one, two feet, three feet, ample. But again, using a little bit of Lumi strip as a protector. Again, 10 o's. Now, I like 10 o for conger, just as a general standard. But when they are being very finicky, I find you can, almost, you can almost size down to like an 8 -0. I know some people that fish 14 or through, and they do catch fish, but these are fantastic. Now, when it comes to your hook lengths, as you can see, all I've done is I knot them. Some people do choose to use crimps like this. Now, they work fine as well. All you do is a Flemish eye to a crimp. I'll show you that here. This end's already made up. There's your Flemish eye and your crimp. This is, I think this is 300 pound mono. All I would do is thread your crimp on. Take one of your hooks. it through just like a simple overhand knot like that then pass the line back through the eye of the hook like that then go through the loop again then all you need to do is just gradually slide the loop down Then take your crimp, slide it down like that, 
and then fix it with some crimping pliers. Whereas the knots that I use if I'm going to tie it, on the end of your barrel swivel, leaving yourself a nice long tag end a uni knot, one, one, two, three, four, like that, wet the knot, pull tight, take off your tag end with maybe half an inch left, Thread on your two little bits of loamy strip, your little one for your swivel, the bigger one for your hook. Then take your hook, same again, giving yourself plenty of tag end to tie the knot with. Make a loop and through for tap one, two, three, four. Moisten the knot. And pull down. And again, half an inch of tag end. Right, that's tied now. But as any of you will know, if you're tying knots in heavy mono, they do slide a little bit. So what's best to do, if you link it over like that, take a strong glove, now with the hook pointing away from your face, what you're doing there is putting as much tension as you can to make sure that these knots here are as tight as they can be. And all you do, moisten it a little bit. Slide your tubing down. There you go. Right. Now that hook length, I'll make up maybe half a dozen of these, keep them in a bag like that so that if for instance if I bring a fish up and it's chewed one off chewed one up and it's all frayed and you know that the line's damaged take it off put a new one straight on saves you loads of time or also sometimes what happens is if if you've deep hooked a fish by accident it's sometimes better to just snip the hook off with a pair of with a pair of cutters and let the fish go with the hook still inside of it that will it's a lot better for the fish than trying to unhook it and damaging the fish. Take it off, clip a new one straight on, saves loads of time. What I'm going to do now though, is I'm going to show you how to make this into this. The components that you'll need for that are here. First of all, we're using a hundred pound Mono. Now, although, like you've seen, that the trace is only maybe that long, because it's better to give yourself a long tag end to tie the knots with. Give yourself a foot and a half to two feet. Now for this, I really like this line. It, it's really strong. Fantastic for abrasion resistance as well. Right, onto one end, this is going to be the bottom end, simple Palomar knot. Like I said, plenty of tag end, over and round, moisten the knot, I am running through these knots quite quickly, 
if you were unsure of any of them, have a look in my how-to playlist. Each of the knots that I use will be explained and there's a video of how to tie each one. Right, so this is going to be the bottom of the trace. First, slide a bead. I quite like these Lumi beads because I find that they're softer than, say, for instance, these ones. And I don't know how much difference it makes, but they're glow in the dark. Right, that's the bottom. The trace that you just tied. Slide that on. Slide one more bead. And then at the top, it's going to, it's going to look like this for now. You want your trace to be possibly this long at your top. You want a strong ball bearing swivel. Again, you can pick these up in packs. Palomar knot again. It really is important to moisten the knots before you pull them tight, especially when you're using mono, because when the lines tighten up and rub together, it creates friction, which heats up, which damages the line. There you are, there's your rig. Now onto the bottom, all I do is connect a little one of these. That's it, that's how simple it is. And then you're ready to go. Sometimes I have found that when you're fishing with a sliding ledger rig, such as this, if you have a big bait, like a mackerel flapper or a pouting or even just like a big squid or a cuttlefish, when you drop the lead down, the lead can sink like that and the bait will sink slower as it pulls through the water. Sometimes what can happen if you aren't paying attention is the zip slider can slide all the way up your leader and leave your bait coming down afterwards. So when the weight hits the bottom, you think that you have, you have the lead there, so your hook is only two feet away from your lead, where in actual fact, because this has slid all the way up your leader, your lead is 10, 12 feet away from where your hook is. So if a fish picks up your hook, you've got 10 feet of slack line that it's got to pull tight before you realize you've got a fish on. With this rig, that doesn't happen. All that happens is as you are dropping down, that'll slide up there like that. And then when you hit the bottom, it'll slide down again. So you know that you are always going to be that far away from your hook. Also what happens sometimes, and it depends on the shape of the bait, if you have say a full mackerel or a full fish on, sometimes it can spin in the water when it comes down. With a sliding ledger rig what happens is when they spin up you just get to the bottom and it just looks like that. Whereas with this rig, because it's just free, free spinning, it avoids tangling up like that. As I'll be fishing in a competition, and time is generally of the essence when fishing in competitions, when you're fishing in a wreck, you're fishing in hard ground, you will get snags, you will lose gear. And that is one of the most time consuming things about fishing. If you get snagged, you pull tight. If you snap it straight away, you've got to wind it in, assess the damage, tie on potentially a new leader, which means a new leader knot, then run out a length of line, then tie on a new swivel, then put on a new trace, then a new bait. What I plan to do is 
I'm going to make up a few sets of rigs which are as you can see 200 pound mono to a strong barrel swivel incorporating a zip slider and ending in a strong coast lock now this is say three and a half to four feet so it's longer than a trace but shorter than I would use a rubbing leader effectively what I'm trying to create is a bigger version of a bolt rig this is so that when I'm if I snag and I lose the lot so I lose my leader and all the trace and I'm just left with like a break in my mainline braid when I wind it in all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my braid and I'm going to tie on a strong coast lock shovel like this so connected to my braid is now this then all I will do I will have two or three of these made up connect this then connect one of my pre-made hook lengths and all you need to do there is attach a new weight to your zip slider and you're ready to go so you've still got You've still got a sliding lead and you have effectively four feet of leader now which I think might be enough and then you have your trace so from losing the absolute lot in a snag you've tied one knot you've tied one coast lock swivel to your main braid and all you do is just attach pre-made traces so instead of having to tie a leader knot, then run it out and then tie a swivel knot and then tie a rig on, all you need to do, wind it in, tie a swivel on, then clip pre-made traces onto your rigs. I'm hoping that might save me some time. Sliding ledger rig, as simple as you can get. Coast lock to a simple hook length. An adaptation of the Portland rig and that's it